And welcome back, hello everybody. Welcome back to our radiation heat transfer learning journal. So in the last video, uh, we considered um, how much uh, energy was being scattered if let's say um, a ray from this direction J was coming in. And um, yeah, how, uh, how much energy was scattered? It was based on the length that's being traveled and we have derived it um, to be this uh, quantity highlighted in green. So I'm just going to take out the, the multiplication sign there. And if we refer to the textbook, we'll see something very much very much similar. So it's sigma n, uh, sigma scattering uh, eta. This is based on the wave number. And that's uh, the intensity from this other direction. They call it si hat. Si hat. So times dA, d omega i, d eta, d s. So if you take a look, it's pretty similar. I lambda instead of uh, I, I uh, what do you call it? I s. Okay, no, I eta, I lambda instead of I eta. And we use the J to denote the direction J. Of course, we can use S hat J. Uh, that's a more that's a better way to actually denote it. We have sigma lambda, d lambda, d omega j, d a and d s. Same for um, same for a uh, little uh, variables there. Okay, so that's the energy infinitesimal energy being uh, uh, scattered away from this ray. Right now the question is, um, yeah, we we did all of this for what we. The real reason is that we want to find out how much of this energy is being scattered into this direction i. So how much energy is scattered into direction i. So to do that, uh, there is a simple way to represent this. This is called the phase function. So you can take a look at this here. Of this amount, the fraction the phase function function times d omega over 4 pi is scattered into the cone d omega around the direction s so what does that mean all right so um let's let's clear this up i think i want to clear this up yeah let's say you have uh, again we have two boundaries and this is ds ds right so this is l is being traveled now it's being scattered all over the place and the amount scattered is basically i lambda so instead of uh, j we use s hat j to be consistent with what the textbook kind of uses the notation the textbook uses as a j into sigma lambda in that direction sure sigma lambda in that direction so you have per unit wavelength per area ds and what is the last one the omega j because that's the solid angle okay it's not just direct that direction it's the solid there's a per unit solid angle as well okay so you have to take all these things into account right so of this this is the amount being scattered and what is the amount being scattered say to this direction so this is s i'll call this s i hat what is the direction what is the amount being scattered into s i hat so the convenient the fraction of okay so this is the total scattered it's total so the fraction being scattered into this direction the fraction of the total being scattered into into all right fraction of total into s i hat this is equals to the phase function so that is represented by 
five. Okay, and what what are the things in five? You need to take note. It's going from S I hat into S hat. So S I hat in this diagram, it is the basically our S J and S hat is the original direction which we denote S I hat. All right. So again, S S J is over here. S J hat is here. S I hat is here. It's basically going from the oblique direction into the main direction. So it starts from SJ hat, goes into SI hat. Yeah, so just take note of the physical meanings. Don't be don't worry about the the change in nomenclature. Alright, so the fraction going there is this phase function. Um okay. And the uh, con and the amount being scattered in, you have to take into account, of course, the solid angle. So, yeah, so you have to take into account that solid angle. All right. So, remember this. There's uh, there's only so much uh, being scattered. So, if we were to uh, let's see, let's see how they put this. I'll put this here. Okay, so this uh, this is uh, the amount scattered. This is the total amount scattered. And let's let's put the total. The total amount scattered is scattered into all four pi directions, right? Yep. Uh, yep. It's all four pi directions, including. I mean, you can technically scatter yourself back in here, but uh, for for the most part, it's it's that. Uh, so yeah, it is like that. So um. Anyway, so this this uh, radiation is being scattered into four pi direction, and it, uh, the distribution is governed by this. Okay, so um, and the amount being uh, scattered into this direction is this. I mean, you since you divide throughout by all the four solid angles, you got to multiply the solid angle here again, the omega i. So that's how I like to think of it. So, um, yeah. So this is the fraction of the solid angle. This is like a fraction of the solid angle. Of solid angle. This is a fraction of solid angle, and this is what uh, people call phase function. Okay, so that is the phase function, and this is the, the kind of a fraction of a solid angle uh, after being scattered into four pi directions, and then this is the direction we are actually concerned with in d omega i, and the phase function will govern the, the uh, amount, the fraction being scattered into that direction. So, the total amount of energy being scattered into direction i is equals to this times Okay, phase function which is phi s j hat. Okay, I think I want to use it differently. S hat underscore j and then comma s hat underscore i close bracket and that should give us a right one. And I'll use s hat j to denote to denote the direction of this uh, um, this particular this particular intensity, then uh, we'll need to multiply, of course, by that uh, fraction of uh, that fraction of uh, what do we call it? The fraction of solid angle, anyway. So we divide by four pi, and that is it. That is it. So. Okay, so that's that's what we have. Let's just double check our equations to see that we don't make too that kind of mistakes. So okay, sigma uh, s for scattering, sigma s into i into d a into d omega i into d eta, which is the wave number in this case, d s, and then the phase function thingy that 
um, yeah, we are concerned with. So, but we are not concerned just with the, the, the energy being scattered from uh, this particular direction. To find the, I mean, our ultimate, uh, our ultimate uh, reason for doing all this, our ultimate reason for going through all that calculation, okay, our ultimate reason for going through all that calculation is to find an expression for the inscattering term. Alright, an in scattering term. So I'll just leave it as that. Spell check error, whatever. Okay. Um, so we want to find a, um, an expression for the total amount in scattered. So, so to consider that, we had to take a look at a ray coming from a direction that was different from our original ray direction. So that's SJ rather than SI. So we considered one particular ray. All right, one particular uh, direction, SJ, but we need to uh, consider uh, integrating all this, right? Because this this is not the only uh, direction of rays that can be scattered into direction SI. We have to consider all the possible directions that are being scattered into this direction, SI. So we'll we'll have to integrate. The total, I mean, to find the total energy, energy being in scattered, we need to integrate across all the omega j. So I'm just going to remove the highlight here. I'm just going to remove the highlight here and let's do a proper integral. So I'm just going to put uh, backward slash integrate over 4 pi alright and we're only going to need to put all this in what exactly am I integrating so I'm integrating omega j integrating across all omega j right so this is the variable that I'm interested to integrate okay so there are a few uh, things we can take out, of course. No matter what uh, omega j we're talking about, d lambda doesn't really matter. dA and dS will remain constant regardless of how you change, regardless of uh, uh, the change in omega j. Omega j you have to keep inside, of course. Okay. But omega i and 4 pi we can kind of take out because these are also constant with respect to omega j, changing omega j. The only things that should be inside are this, this uh, i lambda uh, from sj because that, that uh, depending on the direction this, this quantity will change. The phase function may also change unless of course this is a, a very uh, isotropic or, or whatever phase function. Okay, in the isotropic sense, uh, meaning to say they, they scatter in all directions equally, this will this phase function will just become uh, one if I'm not wrong. Okay, so yeah, if if equal amounts of energy are scattered in all directions called isotropic scattering, then the phase function will become just one. Okay, so that's all. Okay, so so um, yeah, normally uh, okay, this scattering coefficient, the scattering coefficient. Um, well, there are a few ways you can look at it. If there's a, if there's an isotropy in it, I guess um, I guess you could keep it in here, because in it may or may not, it may depend on, uh, I mean the, the scattering coefficient can depend on the an isotropy of the material, that means the material scatters differently depending on how the ray enters the material. I mean that's entirely uh, possible, but for the most part, we can assume 
especially for uh, maybe something like glass, uh, more like gases and liquids. I mean, for the most part, uh, the scattering coefficient is constant with respect to direction. So with that assumption, I can I can we can bring this out, and this the amount scattered will be just this much. Okay. So that's how we uh, come at this term. <coughs> so with this, we can uh, kind of settle in our energy balance. Okay. We can uh, settle our energy balance. Okay, so the power coming in is this. Okay, if in scattering were considered, the power coming in is this, and the power, uh, or rather, let's say, we look, if we look at this uh, energy balance, we can say that the power coming out, which is this much, the power coming out minus the power coming in, is equals to the in scattering term, right? This equals to all of this here, based on what we have uh, uh, previously done. Then, of course, we can get rid of, I mean, this this d omega i. That was what we were referring to before, because uh, we were consider we we did not label the original direction d omega yeah so this uh, in either this pencil of rays here this is d omega i all right okay so we, we did not uh, kind of uh, think about that direction I mean we, we call that d omega previously now we just call it d omega i to differentiate it from this d omega j so we can just uh, safely divide throughout by d lambda, d a, and d omega, seeing how they are outside. Okay, so I'll just delete this, and I'll delete this as well. Okay, so what we have is uh, just an expression for d i d s due to scattering. So we divide both sides by d s. And then we have di, ds, in scattering is equals to this term here. So we have found uh, our expression for our in scattering term. So if we were to combine everything together, what would it look like? So we have a first form of our radiative transfer equation. So di ds equals to okay so the positive ones are the emission plus in scattering term so minus and the negative terms will be the out scattering term plus uh, and minus the uh, what's the other one Sca absorption term all right so let's just uh, put put uh, in bit by bit the in scattering term is this DIDS due to in scattering. Where's the emission? Emission will be. Where's the emission? Uh, yes, this emission will be here. K lambda I B lambda. K lambda kappa lambda I B lambda. So what's the out scattering term? Okay, the out scattering we have discussed over here. So if we were to sum both of them up, you can put them like this. So outscattering is the one that is with sigma. Absorption is the one with the kappa. Okay. If you want to put these together in a beta lambda, where it's com collectively known as the extinction coefficient, we can do as such. And this is our 
radiation radiation transport equation all right so this is a derivation of that and in the next uh, few videos we can uh, do a little uh, variance in the forms of these maybe either to uh, simplify this equation or include uh, optical uh, optical thickness to replace this ds remember we we were always more interested in optical thickness as opposed to ds and we can do a bunch of other stuff as well it's uh, very useful for learning so thanks for watching uh, i'll see you guys in the next video uh, have a good day